Get strapped in. It's just about time to get the party started. And we are underway from Mexico City. Taking in at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Now Fields going to throw on the first play. And that is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. They'll go option to the short side. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing on third down, Fields. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. And C.D., we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed out of my way and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next gen stats. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. They'll go option to the short side. Give him three on the keeper there and it is second down. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. On the jet sweep, here comes Moore. Showed off the footwork, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets' sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Third and two, Fields. And this is going to be incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. They snap it to Fields. Toward the pylon, caught. And he is out of bounds here. They get six yards going for it on fourth, and now it's first and goal. Well, partner, that was a heck of a play right there because there is no chance that he was the primary receiver on that play. Definitely checked it down to him and just said, please, help us out, make a play. And he does and delivers a first down. They need about the length of the football here on first and goal. Fields. And did he get the feet down? No. They'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line. First down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am. And you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. So an incomplete pass a moment ago, and that leads to second and goal. They'll go with Foreman. And he is not going to get in as the big bodies stop him at the one. 
He tried to break that plane, but couldn't get there, and that's going to leave him now at third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Kari Blossom game. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves sticking in the end zone on a running play. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Now give them credit for trying, but there's no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stuff the run, and then executed. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Tannehill. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now we've got a third and four. Now Tannehill. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will have a Titans first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at him. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Tannehill. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On third down, Henry. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but in short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Go. 
After the penalty, it's Henry. Four yards there on the carry, gets it back to second and 11. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On second and 11 now, Tannehill. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 yards. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here's Tannehill. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Back to the ground now. It's Henry. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. To throw is Tannehill. And it's a Titans touchdown. It's trailing Burks from Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at seven. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was Traylon Burks capping things off with a touchdown catch. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken from about the 12. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. On second down now, Foreman, only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. The Bears on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and eight. Back to throw, Fields. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. 
And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. Now here's Trent and Gill on to punt. So possession goes over here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with, but don't fumble the football. Inside handoff, Henry. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Tannehill. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Running left, it's Henry. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Derrick Henry, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Titans have taken the lead. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage partners. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roam, and he found it. Now the try here for the point after. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A drive there of just four plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. On play action, Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Now Fields. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. And they run the option on second down. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down.
A handoff for Herbert. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Kamal. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. They'll run, it's Herbert to the 27-yard line. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight, now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. The last run got a couple, here's second and eight. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he'll be taken down after a gain of about eight, as that will lead us to the two-minute warning. No. So a decent gain there on the play, but that all gets wiped out with a penalty. Well, that's a setback, but all the good play callers, they just move on. They find something else in the playbook. They can attack this defense, and they go right back on the offensive on this play. Out of the gun, Fields. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. A shotgun snap, Fields. And that will be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because, remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Back to throw, Tannehill. He dumps it off for Henry. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And this is picked up by the Bears. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, Fields. 
And this will be caught by Mooney. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, you're going to sell the go. Just go. Let's see who's faster. Let's be perfect. That's right. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Fields. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll bring up a second and short. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. Now, I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Ball resting on the 10-yard line. It's second and one. Fields now to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And the Bears are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Again, Fields. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Justin Fields taking it in from seven yards away. And the Bears will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. He didn't originally want to run, but he didn't see anything in the passing game, so he scrambled. And wouldn't you know it, he scores a touchdown anyway. It's awfully nice to have a quarterback who can make things happen with his legs. Santos with the extra point, and it's now 17-14. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was all capped off by the Justin Fields touchdown run. He took it in himself. After the touchdown, here Santos to kick this one away. Takes it at the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Titans going to go back on offense here late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A good first down call as the screen play gets him nine. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively or it could have gone for more. From the 38, Tannehill. Throw left side complete. That's Hopkins. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Tannehill now to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read, 
and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Tannehill. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 39. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now it's Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Man, that is deflating going into the break. You're in a position with a chance to tie the game. But this kick is off the mark, and they're going to remain three points down heading into the break. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. And incomplete on the deep ball. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you up to Orlando, we now proceed to the start of the second half. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He was unable to shake free there. and They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. Here's Tannehill. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's off a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. On first and 10, Tannehill got his man complete over the middle. It's Hopkins. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up second down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Off play action, Tannehill. Forced out to his left. And they're going to get this up to midfield. He's been patient this entire game, waiting for the perfect moment to surprise him with a quarterback keeper. There he catches him off guard and converts his first rush of the game into a first down. Got to love that efficiency. From the 50, it's Tannehill. 
And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Tannehill. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Here's Tannehill. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it gonna take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Herbert, and he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down. Foreman, and he'll get this to about the 34, a gain of just three. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing on third down, Fields. He's got a man complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Here's Foreman. Good move at the 30. And he's gonna get this down near the 20 yard line. Back to back, nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. They run the option here on first and 10. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Play 
Go, 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 Now a handoff up the middle. Herbert. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork, we saw a good job defensively to recover. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker. And now it's third down. Now Foreman. And they needed two, they could only get one. Fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. Santos' kick is up and through, and they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So it was a three-point lead at halftime, and they double that with a field goal here. And I think defensively, you've got to be okay with that because you've kept this game within a touchdown. Your hope is that you've inspired your offense to put a drive together, get in the end zone themselves, and hopefully get you the lead. After the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. Taken from about the 12. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And the Titans getting set to go. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Henry. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Mexico City. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he'll kick it away for the second time. On the return is Pettis. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. 
Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll start the drive with a give to Foreman. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it. But what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? On second down, here's the option. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. That one will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. Fields tapping it forward, jet sweep. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. On second down and four. Fields batted by the safety, but caught anyway. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Come on now. Over the middle, zone coverage where all the eyes are back to the quarterback so they see the ball thrown. How do they get that completed? Well, they got the hand on it. They tipped it. Just a lucky play for the offense, right? It was. And for the defense, almost demoralizing. That's one that they should have because they see that play developing all the way through. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting box, waiting for the pistol to fire and go, and he jumped a little bit too early. Good work that time to get him to jump, and now here's first and ten. They'll run here with Herbert. And he'll take this down to the 33. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down now, Foreman. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Here's the option, running right, and they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, they have had success when he keeps the ball in the option, but not there. I mean, you just saw exactly why many old NFL coaches would say, don't use your quarterback in the running game. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Field's going to keep it once more. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, Charles, he's already proven that he's not afraid to tuck that football down on the option, and he's into the end zone for the second time in the game. And that's exactly what you need from your quarterback. 
the ability to run the ball fearlessly. And in fact, many quarterbacks will tell you running the football doesn't scare them. Standing in the pocket and taking blindside hits, that's what terrifies them. Only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion, and they were able to do it. And how many teams shy away from running the football in the two-point conversion? They treat two yards as if it were 20. If you're a good team running the ball, go to your strength. Go ahead and push it into the end zone. Yeah, they did. It worked. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. Takes it at the seven. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Tannehill's throw is on target to Burks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Tannehill. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Now we're at the 41, second and nine. Tannehill. His throw incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. Traylon Burks, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Tannehill throwing again. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. Desperation time for Tannehill on fourth down. He's going to go up top again. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. A carry for Foreman. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning.
On first and 10, it's Herbert. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Another carry for Herbert on second down. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Over the middle, that's caught by Scott. And he does not get to the first down marker as they stop him at the 19. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure, yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can't. Tannehill on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Hopkins. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. Here's Tannehill. Dance into his left, and he'll just get rid of it. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Here we go on four, Tannehill. Open man is Burks, and he's got him. And he is going to pick up the Titans first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Again, Tannehill. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Well, partner, you and I were excited for this one today and certainly had its moments. Some good execution at times by both of these offenses. Defenses both made some plays as well. And always a joy to be up here in the booth next to you, my friend. Yeah, it's a privilege to be up here in the booth next to you as well. Thanks for taking the time, and let's go ahead and get ready for our next one, right? I'll see you in the film room. Get that preparation started now.